Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Cesarino back here. It's hit or quits coverage of Deal or No Deal Island a week eight. And we got a lot to talk about tonight on Give a Fishy to the Banker, baby. Uh, we're rolling. What an episode. Jenny Autumn, Dandy. Dandy. It's iced tea time on tea. <laughs> no deal. I don't really remember how the song goes, but. Here's to you, Mr. Banker. We love it. Well done. Drink uh, some iced tea. The banker. Not my money. On one <laughs> Mazel tov to you, Dawson. Uh, have an, enjoy the 100K as hey. Deal or No Deal <laughs> Island rolls on here with Ooh. our embedded reporter who talks to we'll be talking with Dawson tomorrow morning it's Chappelle Dundee Dundee oh man oh yeah I, I mean I would love to say oh, I have yeah. a lot of questions for Dawson but I I don't I Dawson you took the 100k <laughs> And honestly, who could blame you? It's $100,000 I mean, in your move. pocket right now. It was, a, it was a win-win, baby. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, it kept Rob Sesternino here on this podcast. And it also got <laughs> Dawson some money to help his mom retire. So no harm, no foul. But this is what I was saying last episode. When we talked last time, I was like, y'all, I think y'all would be yeah. a little hyper. I think you can't count out Aaron and Rob just yet. Just okay. because. Okay, all right. Bounce back week. Uh, no thanks to Aaron, uh, I might uh, say. No. A nice should guy, we have but really. Expected, should uh, we really have been going uh, in expecting? Yeah, like, Aaron, hello, uh, please. <laughs> could could you try? I no. mean, if only it was... Uh, I was about to say, if only the top six people were safe. But no, <laughs> mm. Aaron still would have been in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but like, right. like Rob... We'll, we'll get into it, but like we shouldn't have gone into this episode thinking, oh, I'm sure the top four people will be safe. Uh, just interesting times here on Dondi. But mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. I, I'm I'm in great spirits. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> believe I talked about it. I said, when they start making three people safe and three people in the bottom, it's mm -hmm. going to get hairy and dicey. And then look at this. You get uh, Nick getting to choose who will go against the guesser with his only options being uh, his own alliance and Aaron. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. well, what happens here? You know, this alliance really dropped the ball by not all getting in the top four. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Yeah. Yes. The status okay. hoot hoos tonight, too. It was just hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Except for Dawson, who's hoo hoo and right to the bank. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? He made a good deal that I think he was going to lose. He was not going to take that deal at that time. He was going to keep playing. No. He, was he was going to keep players. playing, but what were the th so it really was going to come down to whatever the next suitcase that he was going yeah. to yeah. open was because he had of the three, he had the middle suitcase, right? That he mm -hmm. had he had yeah. what two point seven five was what he five. had, yeah. I, uh, and then he had one that was uh, there was one on the board that was three million, and then one on the board that was like a low number, right? So he was right in the middle. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was going to come down to whatever the next case that he opened was going to be because like uh, if the deal was going to, if he opens like the low value one and the deal is all right, all right, the, the banker has the deal. It's $3 million. So he's like, I think he probably says, I think I'm just, I'm going to stick with my case. Right. Yeah. And then he would lose. He would lose. I mean, do you just, think he sticks with his case? I think that if, if yeah. you have your case and then, that 3.5 is like the the only like one that or it's like 2.75 and 3. Point whatever that's out there. I think you probably would be mo more likely just to stick with what you have and instead of switch it with the one that's uh that's out there, right? I don't right, know. You know, he, he, he would take the offer. I, I feel like that when they get down to one suitcase, I feel like that they almost always say, No, I'll op open my suitcase. Yeah. And because I guess like the money is going to go to the pot. So they're like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I just, I felt like they were, it, this was a different situation than Miranda where they basically told Miranda, okay, we'll give you, we'll give you, what was it? 40 K that she got or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, If you take this deal, no matter what, but if the deal is bad, you go home. Um, and this time they it wasn't he we didn't even know what Dawson was going to do yet. And they're like banker calls back and is like, OK, 
this is the offer and it wasn't and like and if the <laughs> if the offer is bad you have to take this offer and if it's the if the deal is bad you go it was just no matter what you are leaving we're not playing mm -hmm. further hey, um the banker so. is a particular type of guy he yeah. makes an offer and he wants he wants something uh precise is that the secret word of the day uh, it, it must have been uh... ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jen, Jenny, how surprised are you going to be at the end of this when we find out that the banker is actually Rob Sesternino? Oh my freaking god! <laughs> like, I mean, is, has a very a, a vested interest in the in the success of a couple of these players, and I'm starting mm -hmm. to look at uh, look closer to home as to who this person could be. Rob, yeah. uh, I'm but fine Chappelle, with it. When precision <laughs> is the secret word of the day, ah. Uh, was, uh, was that a Joe Manganiello shout out to Pee Wee, the late great Pee Wee Herman, uh, after we watched him on Pee Wee's Big Holiday on Netflix? If we are ever so blessed to talk to Joe Manganiello, that's the only thing oh I want to ask him. Is that's like, the number so, one question <laughs> about Pee Wee Herman. Like, I don't, I, I, I have a few questions about this, but I have a lot of questions about Pee Wee. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think when we might find out one day if we get lucky. Think? I yeah, think it was this like 2015, was 2015, you know, 2015, 2016. It couldn't have been that far back. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> let's talk. We got to go through all this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a, lo a lot to unpack. Chappelle's got an interview with Dawson coming up on Tuesday. Great work with Alyssa also, by the yeah. way. Fun interview. Alyssa's memory of the show. Nothing like the edit we saw. And so if you are, uh, <laughs> if you haven't checked out the exit view, view yeah. check it out. Because well, she hasn't watched the show, Chappelle. She doesn't. She, she didn't watch a, the she, she had her own experience. She doesn't have to watch it. I, it sounds like episode. she just it sounds like she watched the episode but just didn't watch the deal or no deal game portion of of her boot episode mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's probably remembering like. how it went and said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, maybe not a fun it. thing to okay yeah. i ain't calling her a liar but i would want to see mm -hmm. how that was edited if i think me. everybody like, I, there's no I way think was, she's yeah. seen it three times like stop as it, stop Wee herman <laughs> himself said at the end of Wee's big adventure that uh that he says to dotty Hey, our Pee Wee, we're gonna miss the movie. He's like, I don't need to watch the movie, Dottie. I lived it. Dottie or Dondi? <laughs> Dondi. <laughs> Dawson. Yeah. Yeah. Alyssa, Alyssa had uh, you know, she seemed to push back against some of the 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 seemingly uh, I guess contentious relationship between her and Stephanie said that you know most of it was mostly just Stephanie, you know. Uh you know, she was kind of surprised that there was so much vitriol toward her. And to that I say, really. Was that before or after you decided that you needed a voodoo doll to stab at this woman's <laughs> likeness? Um, mm -hmm. But again, well, you did not say there. that. <laughs> no, I said I thought that. Um, but uh, I was but like, definitely... then I missed that part. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I'm here to let these people cook and tell us whatever they want us to believe, and we, and then we have to decide who would you believe, mm -hmm. them or your lying eyes. And so, check and out yours. the exit interviews every week, and then check out the new exit interview with Dawson. As uh, you know, we have some a few questions to get to, and. And uh, I, I really kind of want to know how he felt leaving his allies behind. Mm -hmm. I think he probably felt good. Uh, how did the allies feel? Probably different. Uh, yeah, not mm. great. Not yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I right. can fault him for taking that bet uh, or that uh, that offer. So we'll I, we'll get his perspective soon enough. Okay, when, Jenny. When a this was a sad start to the episode. Oh my that gosh. Aaron he lost the princess card last week. <laughs> uh, Alyssa was gone. He it seemed like he walked off the set, but they got he seemingly was back with the group. Um, yeah. But he's hey. still freaking out. He's lashing out at Amy, uh, and he even said, "I will avenge you." Well, and they heard it, uh, which is, is, a, is a whole other thing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they, they, oh, my God, I wasn't prepared for that, that <laughs> reference. <laughs> um, I mean, they did the great thing with the edit last week where they show Aaron walking off set. And it, we have the, you know, the, the caption of him saying, I can't play this game anymore. And we're like, is is Aaron going to quit? I mean, we all know that he wasn't going to. But then we, yeah, we just cut to, like, him and Jordan watching walking on the beach. And then we're like, hey. Uh, more Jordan. Jordan's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One less person. And we got more Jordan. Um, and uh, so, you know, they're just kind of talking through through it. And it seems like and, and this is what I think is part of the real like turmoil that's going on with with Aaron. It's not just about losing uh, Alyssa. 
he's struggling with like some confidence things here um, is my read because he keeps going back to this thing where he says like, it's not just how people talked to talk to or about Liz, Alyssa in the moment. It was that he didn't defend her. And he says something about like how, you know, what if he wins and he like, he can't, he's not going to feel good about it if he didn't defend her in that moment. And so it seems like he's, that's eating him up almost more than the fact that Alyssa has gone. It's like in the, in the high intensity moment, I think that he was like getting upset and wanted to say something and then didn't. Yeah. And Aaron, that's Aaron, what you, I think. You, you got to let go of that toxic masculinity. You Come on. Aaron. <laughs> yeah. you, let it go. you can't carry the weight of the world. King. You can't, you can't, yeah. you can't. I know. Um, but the, th the, the interesting thing is like, he is kind of defending her in his own way by, um, you know, the, the kind of the way that he responds to Amy first in that moment, uh, at the end of the last episode where he's like, uh, which she then confronts him about. So this, there was a scene that was very interesting to me. <laughs> I, I'd love to hear you guys thoughts on that because he approaches, so I thought Rob had gone to bed because we know Rob go goes to bed Because he wasn't early. there. Yeah. There was <laughs> a bunch of them sitting at a picnic table. Literally everyone except for Rob. Aaron comes up with like his dinner or something like that. Sits down. And Amy's like, do you want to talk it out in front of everyone? And he says, only if it's not going to be problematic. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that Basically, mean? If, as long as you don't say nothing I don't like, then I'm fine. <laughs> I like to me problematic. I'm like. It, like, like only if it, it doesn't get like extremely intense like toxic, and like yeah. toxic exactly like you know like words are like being thrown like people are saying things heat in the moment and amy basically just says like you know i didn't so i guess amy sees like this is my opportunity to air what i didn't like about the situation but like aaron is already so fragile like he's already upset and i don't think that amy understood or cared and was like this is my cared. opportunity to be like this is what you did that i didn't like and aaron immediately is like i said nothing problematic <laughs> <laughs> and he gets so upset. And I'm like, oh no, this is going terribly. Um, yeah. hmm. Where was Rob? Where Rob was, was Rob. Rob yeah, was taking they woke nap. him up. They woke him up after that, Chappelle. Someone must have called they him did. in. Yeah, they, they, they definitely woke him up after that. They were like, hey, just so you know, Aaron's crying again. Look, look, Aww. look, Aaron. I, 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 somebody got to say it. I don't feel bad for you. I do not feel bad for you. Oh, I do not. Feel bad for you. I do. I do not. I do not feel bad for you. Oh, I've been rooting for Aaron all season. I have a heart. Here we are, and I'm using it to tell you from the from the bottom of my heart. Stand the hell up. Stand up. Yeah. Stand up. You're going down. He did going stand up. Sad, yeah. Baby. No. He stood up against Amy and walked away. <laughs> no. 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 Chappelle Alyssa doesn't like his... people that uh, are a little. Uh, I want to say. I don't want to say crying, but. Listen, here's my thing. From what we were presented on the show at the Banker's Temple, Alyssa started the fight. She over there, Aaron, don't help her. Uh, what's you what's that, Alyssa? What you got to say? Oh, I don't care if Stephanie loses wins or lose. Actually, I'm rooting against her. Then they start arguing, and now Aaron's like, it's too much. Oh, my God. Like, stop talking about my friend, which, I, okay, I feel it. I get defensive about my friends, too. But then when you walk up on the table of the people who targeted it and eliminated your friend as they're talking about the elimination, and you sit down like, all right, y'all, I'm here now. Let's just keep it cute. Don't talk about my friend. And they're like, so, Aaron, let's talk about it. He's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, all right. Aaron, sir, you win some, you lose some. Everybody gets eliminated at some point. You got to bounce back. That's why I don't feel bad. I, I need you to bounce back because we say that Aaron didn't quit the game, but he mm -hmm. definitely did. I mean, even mm -hmm. though he was in this episode, he did nothing uh, like to move the needle to, to save yeah. himself. He did nothing. It was literally by the grace of the banker that Aaron survives this round. Yes. Um, and time heals all wounds. And I think that this was like a minor miracle that he and Rob get through this episode unscathed miracle. after this. <laughs> and... When we unscathed, though, I mean, I think I, I think 
Aaron's still probably hanging on by a thread. But... Hanging on by a thread, but I don't know if they, <laughs> if they leave this episode in a worse position than they end up. No. I think they're frankly in a better position. A better than position. Yeah. Yeah. We got, and, and, we got and it rid seems of like, all right, he's, uh, he's shaking off the hangover a little bit. Like, I feel like that yeah. Aaron, I think Did he's going to be back to himself. In the next episode, you don't think maybe so? Maybe now, this, not, maybe not, not the of. next day, not the next day. <laughs> yeah, he but, needed but more than one day. You don't think by <laughs> next week he's going to be? Oh, he's going to be uh, at least like able to like participate in the challenge. <laughs> Or do you think it's just over? He lost Alyssa. He lost his power. I think he's going to bounce he, back. He's I, acting like that. I'm the one, listen, I was the one championing him last week. I was like, he still just, got a chance. I just want to know, know if this is a phase. The whole episode. I just want to know if you think of this as a phase or if like it's just continued downward spiral from here. Or if he just needs to have a moment, have his feelings. Yeah. Feel bad for himself a little bit, and then you know, dust the shoulders yeah. off, and then and come back and be like, right, again. Let's go. like, I think he's gonna come come out on the other side of this, Chappelle. Need, and Rob's gonna he pump needs him a up. confidence boost. He need no, he needs a real confidence boost, not that not that Boston <laughs> Rob nonsense. He needs <laughs> manipulative, to like, kind yeah, of, yeah, like, hey, Aaron, you're great. Yeah, just don't, just please don't quit the game, please. I need you. To, I need a shield. <laughs> you're Lord, kind of me over, man. For the like... love of God, get it together. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. he doesn't need one of those. He needs to win a challenge. I think Aaron needs to come in and there needs to be something that he can outright be immune and give himself a little wiggle room where he doesn't have to stress about this. Because I think mm -hmm. the reason why I'm like, I'm not letting him off the hook yet because this whole episode, like I said, it was none of it was due to his own doing. It, what was about to happen was about to happen. It was like a train that was got that had gotten away from him and that he wasn't even chasing after anymore. And so, yeah, he survives this one, but I really think he needs to have some more agency. And right now it's just like, He's just, I won't even say floating. He's literally getting dragged week to week by the banker yeah. at this point. So we see Rob go out and go and talk to Aaron. And look, uh, that we can admit two things of like, okay, one, like Rob needs Aaron for his own benefit in the game. But I really do think that it, there seems to be like, as you know, I, we've watched the evolution of this guy for over 20 plus years on television that. This did seem like sincere and not something that you would have seen a younger Boston Rob do seem to have interest in the well-being of Aaron. 100%. I feel you're not buying it. <laughs> what? It feels so what? fatherly. It feels so genuinely fatherly. I don't, you don't need to say anything. We I didn't say anything, face. Jenny. We Jenny, just go ahead with what you're saying. Well, I'm just, I just want to say like, I feel like you, even though we're seeing some of Rob's greatest hits and like, you know, mm -hmm. he's still the same guy. He still has the skills and like the tactics that he's used in, you know, the many times he's played other games. However, I do feel like we're getting glimpses of like different energy or maybe just like yeah. more matured energy he's going to bed late or early he's not staying <laughs> up and watching everyone and i also just feel like the way that he talks to aaron is he sees him as a child you know yeah. not even necessarily a little brother like almost literally like one of his children mm -hmm. um but in in a sweet way like in a where, where i truly believe that he he feels like this responsibility over him the way that he feels responsibility over his daughters and like wants to support them but like wants to like encourage them to like do better and stuff but also Smart it hurts up. to see them hurt because he cares about them in a way yeah. that is different than other people he's played because, with. That's my and, and take of it. I think if he was insincere, I think he would say it to the camera. Like, I think he might go out there and like do right. what he needs to do to give Aaron the pep talk. But uh, un unless you moment. feel like that, you know, uh, <laughs> that, and, and look, Rob's been around the reality TV game for a long time. I think he knows that <laughs> that might come across as highly unlikable to the audience, but I think he would still, if he was fake, like, I think he could, he would make fun of him in a way of like, Aaron's being a baby. I gotta go talk to him. And it, like, I think he would g like give us a little bit of a peek that he was being insincere with Aaron. The man has a heart. We know this. He yes. says, you know, I know I get painted as a villain, but I mean, damn, the boy crying. I gotta help him, you know? <laughs> but, but, but I will say this objectively. Aaron's probably worse, like he's Boston Rob's worst number one ally since coach. You know, like uh, so he's <laughs> <laughs> the man, the man is like literally like it doesn't coach. Boston Rob goes to him and says, You're a grown ass man. 
You know, like stop crying on the beach. Stop it. Mm-hmm. You're a grown man. We're not doing this. You know, this ain't coach though. This is Aaron. He's a lot younger than Rob. Um, Rob wasn't talking to Nat 10 like this. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hey, Nat 10, we're not quitting. She's like, okay. And that was it. You know, he's got he's basically like keeping Aaron in against his will almost. Like I'm, I'm sure if Rob looked away for too long, Aaron's just gonna disappear into the island. Like he left, you know, he's, walk he's off into he the was, ocean. Yeah, he was swimming into the ocean, screaming something about a princess. I don't know. And so mm-hmm. yeah, I, I enjoyed the partnership between the two of them. But again, if I want to see Aaron and Boston Rob do well, I need Aaron to do something. I need him to step it up because this is now well, getting to the point where if we don't make five people immune, Aaron. I'm sorry, you're going. You're going to get eliminated. Well, and that's the thing is, it's not like we're not we're that Rob is excusing. Like we see these glimpses of Rob's like kind of exasperation and like frustration that like this is his sole ally left in the game. And like I truly believe that Aaron has been his number one person this entire time. But you know when he had some other options and Alyssa was also still in the picture, like there were more outs for him to kind of like insulate himself. And now it's really all down to Aaron but you know we get these little like comments of him being like oh and I'm walking through and then I see Aaron it's like just You're doing like, treading water <laughs> like what are you doing like it's not like he's doing it without criticism and even the way that he talks to him like you know we've seen it like in little pieces throughout the episodes like the way he's like like you remember like one of the first episodes where he's like hey you know the way you you got to talk to me first, buddy. You can't, you can't be going and doing that. Like he is truly like mentoring him, but in a way where he like sees him as, you know, like his inferior, like it's like a child relationship, like way more than I think than even like a little brother. Like, I think he really feels like his dad. Um, Mm. And I also think it's like a different relationship because like, they're both guys. Like, I don't necessarily think that this would be the same way if it was like a super young girl. Um, I think that he's like, I don't know. I just think they have like a very interesting relationship that we've never seen Rob work with someone like this on the sh- on any of the shows. And um, he's a different guy now. Like he's literally looking at Aaron and like seeing him as his child, possibly because he's the same height as all of his daughters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we I mean, saw the picture. Okay, yeah, the, you're not making pack. that up. Like uh, that's <laughs> no. that's just you math. This yeah, he, he yeah. fits right in. But here's my issue. Let me talk to you real quick, Boston Rob. I know you're listening. Let me tell you something. I'm I'm, I'm trying to skadoo into his brain. You are going to, to lose this game because of this young boy. You need to ditch him. <laughs> The, the only time, Rob, that you do poorly in this game is when you're emotionally invested in these people. When you got emotionally mm. invested in Amber, you came in second place. This man is about to lead you to your grave. Ditch him. Jordan is right there. <laughs> I know. I know. You didn't know that till now. We didn't either. But let me tell you something. That woman has worked her way into the middle. You and Aaron are about to be shooting at the, uh, the hootie hoos. They're going to be shooting back at you. And Jordan is going to waltz her way to the end. And you are aligned with Aaron. Align with Jordan. <laughs> Jump ship, Rob. You can do this. We, well, we've come so far. We did start <laughs> to see more Jordan in this episode. She, yeah. too, was checking on Aaron. Uh, she feels like that she's in a good spot in the middle. Uh, so at least uh, Jordan, two episodes in a row, has started to emerge here at the final six. Uh, Visibility but, spike. <laughs> yep. But as Rob and Aaron are, you know, they're realizing they're on the bottom. Here come the night owls mm. uh and they're pissing me off now rob uh, i was not i was i'm I trying was to being, hold my tongue i was being nice before i was like all right it was cute for a minute who do you who? i was i said you said is this the worst alliance ever and i said <laughs> Did I, didn't say and that. I, were like, I didn't say that you said something like that you you were you asked you asked the question. Sure. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going back. Hey, if I, I asked like the question, that's Stephanie. not the same as saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, and Chappelle and I said, have you, sir, we know you've watched Big Brother. There have been yeah, terrible, right. terrible alliances. Stop. But I said what he said. Yeah. This <laughs> this episode, the first half of this episode, especially, I was getting um, I was getting a little frustrated because it's like when you get a victory. 
and like because I think that the night owls came together as like some sort of opposition, right? Like they're like Rob and his minions, they're like getting everything they want. They're running this game. They're calling it the Rob Mob. They're still saying Rob Mommy Mob. The, the, yes, the two person two mob. <laughs> yeah, like everyone knows the classic two person mob, so powerful. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, so it was like they felt they were like the underdogs at first. And they kind of like banded together to be like this opposition to the Rob Mob. And now they are the majority alliance of the game. And they are gloating. And we never want, you know what I mean? Like it was like I, I supported their venture. And then they got what they wanted. And they... I just felt like they were a little, they were relishing it a little too much, you know? And mm -hmm. I was getting, I'm like, this is how you have me like rooting with every piece of me for Rob to just run the table because like, I want it to be a fair game, you know? Like, obviously I'm rooting for Rob to do well, yeah. but now I'm like, I want, I want him to just like, <laughs> Because he's become the underdog. Like, he's truly... He has Aaron, who who is e not even finishing the challenges. And they're up there laughing and talking about, like, what did you say when you when you opened the briefcase? Like, run it back. Like, they're just, like, feeding into each other's, like, gossip. Like, I don't know. They became villains. Would, would you say it was bullying, me. Jenny? No, it's not bullying because they're not going... <laughs> they're not... Per <laughs> First of all, don't entrap me like that. Yeah. Um, and... <laughs> You Stop drama it. monger, Rob, trying to stir the pot. I'm here. not saying it. I'm just saying people on Twitter are saying it. I don't think that there was any bullying, but I that do think tweet. that. Are you sure? They were... Someone, I don't. I didn't see it. I don't know. Um, but I, I just... deleted them. Okay. Well, <laughs> how did you do that? Um, <laughs> I just felt like they just they they got a little too high on their own supply in the first half of this, and they're like. We like we are running this like this is so good and that's how you you know you live too long live long enough to become the villain, um, and that's, that's what, what they I say saw about happening. The Olympia Island, yeah. And the, it, and yeah. it would have been worse if Dawson didn't go like tonight. Like I would have been I would have come in here tonight and I would have been insufferable because i would be just preparing for them to be you know dancing on aaron's grave at the beginning of the next episode yeah. and i just thought that wouldn't feel good to me so i am i am at least glad that they were humbled even though it's not even a humbling they needed to take a hit here they took the, an l the night owls were just a little too cocky in this episode yeah and we needed to even the playing field back a little bit here. okay um Rob tells us, okay, that he thinks also that Aaron is going to be okay. And he made an analogy about how, hey, remember that time Larry Bird was in the playoffs and he was sick? That's what this is like with Aaron. Of course, Chappelle, this is uh, the epitome of NBA sick player in the playoffs analogies. Uh, there is, there is no better example that Rob could have gone with here than that yeah, time. Larry Bird. Celtics. Yeah. I don't know. Why stop it. <laughs> stop, it. Nobody knows. No, no, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Kobe Bryant did way too much. Dirk Nowitzki did way too much in the playoffs for you to go to Larry Bird. Sorry, we ain't mm -hmm. think, look, come on now. I mean, there, there are more topical references in the last decade that you could go he's to. He's Boston centric. He's like, he is, he, but let us in on the joke. Hell, we like <laughs> Larry who? Lawrence? Lawrence yeah. Bird? Well, yeah, that's right. what I think when I think of Aaron. I'm like Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Like yeah. that's, Larry Bird. The, that's the the Aaron Bird. The, the Another the Boston Brains. Uh but there, no Michael Jordan <laughs> flu game? Nothing. Michael Jordan, uh Dirk, you know. I mean, there's a lot of crazy games that we've seen uh, where people just pull themselves up. And, and man, to be fair, Michael Jordan was poisoned by the state of Utah. Let's just call it what it is. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, there have been other games. Like, people have done some amazing things. Kobe has done some amazing things. You know, like, we've seen it. We've seen these people do outrageous things, you know, in the last 200 years. So, not to, no disrespect to Larry Bird, but, you know, there's some more recent references. But the, it's the mass connection that he has with Aaron. He's got to make the reference that is yeah. relevant to the mm -hmm. two of them. Aaron but... has never seen Larry Bird a day in his life. <laughs> no, because he's I 12. Don't... 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. He thinks Larry Bird is a Pokemon. No, no. I got the Larry Bird card. I got the Princess card. These are all things that exist in Magic the Gathering, of course. Look, look here. The, I think the reason why it's really tough to root for the Night Owls, who could also be a Larry Bird, if you will. Um, you got the Night Owl card, the Larry Bird card. The Larry Bird <laughs> Night Owl, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the reason why it's hard to root for them is this, exactly what you were saying, Jenny. Uh, they're in the majority, and we rarely rarely see Rob in these spots where he's just outnumbered and it looks like he's about to get picked off. You know, like mm -hmm. in When Is At War, we saw that he was kind of in that position, but you know, you kind of held out hope that maybe Rob's going to sit here and just like yeah. rob this thing to the end. And it, and it just doesn't happen. Uh, but like, we don't ever see him in that position that he was in way back in the Marquesa where it's just like, he's just a number that has to go. And here it's literally him and uh, Aaron just counting the deck chairs on the Titanic. They're like, well, I guess we're going to go down. Which one is yeah. it? And when is it going to happen? What can we do to stay afloat? I guess I'll win immunity. So yeah, I was rooting and for Boston Rob to take out this alliance a little bit too. With all due respect mm -hmm. to the Night Owls, who I'm sure are we're, we're we're joking around. I'm sure they're all lovely people, but as Literally. as <laughs> as human beings watching this television show, we don't know them. We don't know okay. them. I kind of like the Night Owls. I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you right now because Amy's fun. I feel yeah. like I know them now. Yes, we know a lot of Stephanie, and and Nick is giving us all the ins and outs of being a, a sanitation worker that I had no clue existed. True. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't Precision know they had. Precision is there. driving the garbage. Precision, ah! bro. <laughs> bro. Yeah, he's you see that it. You know, like no, but I, I think we're getting to know them. Yeah, Stephanie. We've learned a yeah. lot about Stephanie in the last. I think honestly, of all the night owls, the one we knew the least about is the one they got rid of this episode. Dawson yeah. is the one. Um, maybe they should be trying to recruit Jordan into the night out since we barely know her. Maybe, maybe. I mean, she wasn't it. I think maybe they lost her. And this is one of the things I, I liked about Jordan's visibility spike in, in this episode specifically is not only were we finally getting to see her on our screen like we did last week, um, she was also getting confessionals where she talked about her position in the game. Like I loved the awareness of you know, her saying, uh, you know, I'm kind of in the middle. I've been making really great relationships and connections with literally everyone in the game. And she she knows the power structure in, in the game. She literally called it out. Like, Rob and Aaron are together. And then a she didn't say the Night Owls. She might not know they have an alliance name. But she said, Amy, Stephanie, and Dawson and Nick are together. And I'm good with all of them. And that puts me in a great position because no one's targeting me first. So I loved this for Jordan. She knows her place in the game. And she knows that that's like cakewalk territory for her. But, I like... Does she like I, it's interesting to me where, where she wants to go here? Like, do you think that night owls are just going to be like, oh, hey, we kind of hung out with you a little bit. Like, do you want to like just take Dawson's place in our majority alliance here? Like, um, where was where was I before? <laughs> yeah, I mean, where were you, Jordan? Hell, we've been watching the same show you you was on uh, and we haven't seen you <laughs> except for to hear your strategy. Like, again, I'm not trying to read the edit too much. But we have the little bit we've learned about Jordan is that. She's in the middle and she doesn't want anybody to come after her. So she's not going to try to openly come after anybody. And she's seemingly pulling that off flawlessly right now. So I don't know how they even get Jordan if they're not able to rope her in. Because if Jordan is in the position where she has to pick somebody, it behooves her to lead Boston Rob and Aaron around. You know, like, whatever. I, they're mm -hmm. not coming after me. Um, and maybe they're bigger Just fish keep to fry. Than, it out. Yeah. Exactly. Keep playing both sides. Uh, are we team Jordan here? You know, I don't know. Might be. I mean, she literally called herself. She said she was floating. She understood the proper definition of floating um, and acknowledges that she, that's what she's doing in the game. And so, like, I have respect for her. It's not her fault that she hasn't been shown that much until this point. I don't know what that means for her fate in the game. But I just enjoyed that we at least got some insight on, like, how she saw her place in the game and that she was aware of the fact that she's literally in the middle here. And that's a great position to be. So, like, you know, if there were a fishy, I'd maybe I would maybe uh, extend a fishy to Jordan in this episode, right? Like, still the banker, but I, I hear your still point. The banker. Oh, yeah. True. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Hate the guys, Hate the banker. Hate me. his fishy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about our excursion to the Swamp of Secrets. Okay. 
Uh, Joe says, all right, I heard you all uh, ready for a jungle cruise. Uh, well, this is more of a super unpleasant land slog, he called it. This felt reminiscent of Beyond, uh, Beyond the Edge to me. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. hot. It's going to be damp. It's going to be muddy. Follow the rope. Uh <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> yeah. All right. I would love to see Joe and Moro together. Joe looked hot tonight. I'm sorry Whoa. to be thirsty on Maine, but um, yeah, I know it's he was wearing like the same green that I'm wearing tonight, and I mm -hmm. just like I don't know. I just love seeing his outfits. It's like part of the fun for me. Like, okay, Jeff's Jeff Probst is always wearing some version of the same shit. Okay, it's like he's wearing the black, uh, you know whatever shirt and he's wearing the blue one he's wearing like some sort of version of the same shorts um it's it's a uniform joe has like a little bit like joe has swag he's like wearing like s different versions of like the same idea he does have kind of like a uniform out there but it's like so much style so hot anyway that's just me being. <laughs> I just have to Jenny's, give, Jenny's corner <laughs> that's me i let wow. me have my moment okay, joe Okay, Joe. Yeah, Kim, I see it, okay? <laughs> and you were seeing it in the flesh, and I understand. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The more time I see it, I'm like, <laughs> that green's really working for you, Joe. Like, hello, hello. Let's have some tea. Shout out to okay, Big Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so follow the ropes. Go out to a case. Uh, the cases don't have markings on them. Once you get out there, you just got to follow the rope through. Uh, interesting wrinkle here of that there is sabotage that is able to be done. Sabotage. Now, I thought that this was interesting where four people being safe definitely does help Rob. But <laughs> the idea that everybody could sabotage one person Chappelle, like, I feel like if this show was really, really trying to help Rob, I feel like they would not have instituted something like this. I mean, unless they, you know, thought exactly what happened was going to happen, which is everybody tries to throw everybody off by like, I, oh, I really want to target Rob, but I guess I'll put one on Aaron. And they'd be like, Aaron's like, ah, uh, no. does it? Is like, terrible job by the night owls. Yeah. Terrible job. Yeah. They, they could they all, the ball. all put your sand on Rob. And it wasn't like that he went last or anything. He was like kind of in the middle. They're afraid yeah, of him. They yeah, are I mean, afraid. But they should be. That, that's the thing. If it was just a matter of if Rob doesn't win immunity, we can vote Rob out and he goes home, fine. But you'll still have to beat the banker and then also eliminate Rob. So just put it, putting all your chips into, like, let's get him out basket, you could miss, as we, I mean, as we would have saw. You know, if this had happened, and let's say Rob was in the bottom three and Dawson is the one who goes up to uh to, to do the deal or no deal island, they offer him $100,000. He says, nope, I'm good. Well, you all just piled on Rob and, and he got away with it. Like, he survived. And now... He's coming back harder than ever. So you can't, yeah. you can't put but all you got to take a basket. shot eventually. Like you, you got to yeah, get him but, out. It, I mean, well, there's still Aaron. And so that's what I'm saying. They're, you could do the half measure. And I think that's what they did. It's not the sexy move. And yeah. it's probably not even the best move. But at the same time, I can see why they would do it. It'd be different. In, again, it'd be different if that person was dead to rights and they're going home. They could still survive I, up until the 13th hour, you know? So exactly. what you going to do? And I think. I think that the way, like, the structure of the game means that, you know, putting yourself out front as, like, the... Because they're an alliance. They all have the same goal at this point. They all think that Rob is now the, bigot, the biggest threat. Because um, I, I do think that Stephanie still was always going to target Alyssa over Rob. But... Um, and, and so they have a common goal. But none of them want to be the, like the main person in front of the opposition to Rob because when Rob plays against the banker and makes a good deal, that's who's getting eliminated. And none of them want to step up and show their cards. They're literally all saying it. Stephanie literally explains her strategy here being like, I don't want to be the person that Rob is looking at the most. So I'm not going to go and, and pile on him and, and directly go against him. And so they're all too afraid of being, getting, you know, the backlash 
because one, he's he's good. He's probably when there's four people that are going to be safe anyway, he still has a very good chance of getting one of those briefcases just because how the hell does he do it? Um, mm -hmm. And also, if he is in the bottom and he gets some some luck on his side and he's eliminating someone, none of them wanted to be the person that he goes after. Although I think it's I mean, the guys probably should have just done it because i don't think he was gonna go after nick or dawson i think he's no, gonna Stephanie's take i think to he's write. gonna take out amy or stephanie like for sure yeah. for sure but it feels like stephanie uh, for sure, Jenny. I, I, but I still think that amy would have been the right one but I, i'm saying the same thing as i said last week <laughs> but then it's like and then it was hard to watch because they're like okay the half measure is let's just hold Aaron's head underwater and just drown him like he's already <laughs> just struggling <laughs> Mm -hmm. so hard and they say okay well none of us want to like you know like poke the bear that is boston rob so we're just going to take his his poor maimed little friend and just like finish him like mortal combat so um that was like tough to watch and, like, they, <laughs> literally and they're like he's not gonna do it anyway you know like you're just yeah. you're just mm -hmm. confirming he'll be in the bottom and that is probably the only move if you're too afraid to be the person that strikes at rob here but you're yeah. right i think it would have been better to see someone say like dawson's talking about like i'm gonna make my big move and then he just like piles on to aaron and, to aaron. and then takes and then takes the money Dawson, which one is it? I thought you were gonna make a move, baby. Um, you know, but the it move was taking same. the bag, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, like, yeah, look, probably the right move. But yeah, it was the right it, move. It, I, I yeah. no shade to Dawson for taking the money. No, no, I don't not. I'd love well, I'd, like, I'd like to talk about it at the end. How about that? But let's um, talk about it at the end. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think it's very big brother, right? Where you have your two your two people up, and you're like, one of them has to go. I need a pawn. I'm gonna tell this person they're the pawn because they can't know that I'm that they're their actual target unless they become the actual target. In which case, that'll be after the veto, and they can do nothing to save each other. And then I have to go go and make nice with that person because they're coming back to play again next week, and they can be the HOH. It's like I cannot yeah. leave Rob to his devices, knowing that I was his main target, like the number one person targeting him, because then he can target me next week when he has free reign. Because chances are he he might win immunity, and if he doesn't, he might be going up against the banker, and he has to pick somebody. And so, yeah, I think they like I think that the the game mechanic is very interesting because it did encourage them to not all show their cards, but also to not pile on on one person and like you know kind of gang up on them because we haven't seen we've seen that's not the best tv but i think mm -hmm. yeah, yeah in a general sense if, if there's no option for rob to come back and avenge you, him like to, to survive this then yeah you pile all of it on rob you leave aaron to his devices and assume he's not gonna do anything either and then no. you just go and lock up those top four spots that's all you have to do if it was the other way around and rob had the numbers and there was one person who was like the antagonist he would have had all his people Put the sand on the one person. But it he would, wouldn't have. Yeah. But he wouldn't have put his sand on the <laughs> No, everyone else that, would be taking yes. the heat. Yeah. That's a good exactly. point. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the that's the gotcha. Rob would have been like, I went after Jordan. She was uh, you know, nobody, nobody got any heat on her all game. No and everybody freebie. would be like, okay. Yeah. 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 And everybody would be like, oh Jordan, you're out. so yeah. funny. Coincidentally, <laughs> Rob is the one person who has called out Jordan's name as a potential person that they should be targeting. And everybody's been like, oh, shut up, old man. Like they're not paying him any mind. I yeah. think he's right, y'all. I think she's the one. He she's knows, but also he need he he needs to, like, I don't think she's in any danger from Rob right now because he needs to no. actually get rid of people yeah. that are like going for him. Okay, mm -hmm. I think we can yada yada a little bit of the pulling the ropes to get to everybody. Everybody has to pull the ropes, get through long slog, uh, whatever. Rob and Nick are going for the same thing. Rob is just like, ah, look, what do I need this aggravation for? I'm gonna go just find a different case. Um, yeah, I don't even know why he decided to go like the fact that he made even the decision to just start going after the same one with him it's like i i, I just felt like he should have even decided earlier and just pick the rope that was the next highest that was left there like mm -hmm. i don't know how he figured i don't know if he he had any idea what he ends up picking but like i just felt like 
he acknowledges that Nick is a, a big, strong guy. And he's if it comes down to a physical thing, like you don't want to be in a situation where you have no rope because you're fighting right. over the same one. Right. Um, I, I was kind of surprised that he even went for it. I was like, yeah, I don't think you want to be battling like toe to toe with Nick here. And he realizes it pretty quickly, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's tougher than him. I'm sorry. Ross he, Rob called it out. He said he he's said a he big guy with big arms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He but look, his arms are big, but Rob I'm is a reality TV competition magician. Okay. Because there's no reason mm-hmm. why he should be like, dang. Please, no magicians. Please. Listen, please, no. I'm just saying the man <laughs> works miracles. He's like, dang, I'm actually lo- losing this little battle against uh Nick. Guess I'll just grab a random case from over here. Oopsie. I got the second highest one. I'm immune. He's like, trips and falls into immunity. Look at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. How can I know? Yeah. Incredible. Incredible Speaking stuff. of trips and falls, Aaron is out there and uh, he's just like wandering through the swamp. Like Rob has to like bring him a case. Like <laughs> what was it? Braxton? Who was the Branson? Brax- Branson. Branson. Branson had to Branson. do with Kim Matina early on. Yeah. Of, like here, here's a case here's for it. you. But Take you have to bring back. it back. And that was that. Uh, was still I hate the swamp. Feet. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bank, uh, swamp. Yeah. yeah. Um, Trees. There's a snake. Like, Dawson sees a snake along the way. Uh Dawson's face when he saw that. No, I thought it was Nick. Nick, I, I, Nick I, saw I, snake. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But it was his eyes that took me. I was like, <laughs> so, wait, what is he looking at? He's just like, ah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. And then I saw the snake. I was like, oh, stop it. That's a cute snake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, lots of trees and branches. It seemed like the untangling, like getting to the case and getting it out of like the tree or whatever it was in didn't seem to be like the hardest part. It was like untangling it from wherever it was and then getting it back. That mm-hmm. seemed to be hard. because Even Jordan, who seems pretty like physical and good, was really struggling and only had a couple minutes to get back. Um, but I-, I just thought it was interesting, like, Rob eventually just decides to go for another case that he just sees. He's not following a particular rope. He just looks and he's like, that one looks hard to get. And then he's like, that must be a good one. Um, and I think the the funny thing is, is I think that the case that he ended up grabbing was the one that Dawson thought he was getting. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure that the number that Rob got, Dawson was going for Mm -hmm. um initially and he comes back and it's yeah so so dawson initially starts going for the 3.75 million and i don't know what happened along the way but the case that rob brings back is 3.75 and dawson ends up with 2.7 well i think that there were points where like all of the ropes like kind of like intersect Mm -hmm. like in the water so i think that dawson probably watching like i had no idea what's going on yep dawson ends up following the wrong something they should have done like a like a like a visual um like different color like showing i don't know i feel Mm -hmm. like technology is there because i just truly had no idea what was going on i was yeah. like i think it's fine i think we got what we it's needed fine. to get it's fine but i well i guess then maybe it gets rid of the suspense but yeah. i would have loved like i love on like reality tv where like someone's looking for something and then it's like they use like graphics to show like it's over Wordy. there like yeah mm-hmm. like i felt like i i would have loved a little bit of that sort of thing where like we had an idea of like where people were going wrong or something i don't know just for mm-hmm. funsies but it's yeah. fine all right well we get nick back first he's got the 4.5 million declares himself king of the jungle him and Dundee. yep yeah. okay <laughs> All this right. This is his um, island. <laughs> and Rob comes back. He's got 3.75. He's going to be safe. And they celebrate with Jenny, as you mentioned earlier. Ice tea time. Tea time. It's ice tea time on Deal or No Deal Island. I have no idea how the song went, but it was mm-hmm. adorable watching. Like, because Rob knows he's safe. Like, they're the only two that have come back. But mathematically, Rob's case, I think, was like the third highest. So Nailed even. It. Like, there was no situation where he wasn't going to be safe. So he's like, let's have some freaking tea, my guy. Like, him and him and Nick are buddies again. Like, I love their relationship because they're, like, they're, like, the two, like, tough, like, I don't know, like, 
the broy guys um and i think that they like have affection for each other but they're competitive with each other and then when they don't have to be at odds anymore and rob realizes that they're both going to be safe and they don't have to like be at war it's like all right let's have some tea let's have a great time like i love relaxed rob you know yeah Chappelle, do you think that there's an opening now that Dawson is gone for Nick to come back to the fold a little bit with Rob? Absolutely. Uh, Rob, I don't understand how you dropped the ball on this relationship. You Now you should be going to Nick and saying, we're the two big guys. They're not going to let yeah, us get to the end. Other. Everybody thinks that it's physical. We should be the shield for each other. Blah, blah, blah. Let's just try to get all these immunities and yeah. get these weaker people out. Like, Rob, you got to yeah. pivot. Leave, but, leave the, Aaron behind. Don't worry, Chappelle, because I think that after this episode, I think that Rob's going to have the conversation with Nick like, eh, I thought that that was kind of a crappy thing that, you know, Dawson left you here all alone. Like, that wasn't right. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like, but not I bro. like Nick because Nick Nick normally Nick normally would fall into the archetype of people that you would just see kind of fall for that. But he's been like kind of subverting those expectations this whole game. Like the fact that he's not growing down with Boston Rob is very interesting to me. Like how is he not? But Rob, this is normally cake for you. You normally could scoop up a, a Grant Matos, you know, without trying. Uh, and so yeah, he's like, hey Nick, I like your pearl necklace. You wanna you wanna be on my team now? And Nick's like. <laughs> Yeah, sure. And the next thing you know, he's gonna be like, "Who? Who? Like Nick's playing a game." I, I think Rob needs to start looking for other options of people who might be immune for a while. And Nick seems like somebody who's gonna be tough to beat in some of these challenges. Mm -hmm. I, I like. I think they definitely mutual respect sort of situation. But yeah, that's like what's kind of fun about this cast is it's they're not just all blindly like falling into the Rob trap and and being you know just like soldiers for him and you know we talked about the 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 uh the sabotage and the challenge nick was the only person that added to rob sand um mm -hmm. he like and he was like the second person to go i think and he just like he 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 said you know oh i'm gonna it's this this is an easy decision he said uh gotta go for the guy that i won with last week or something like my partner from last week or and so i'm like hey Nick isn't afraid to like kind of actually go after Rob. Like Nick is the one person that is mm -hmm. okay with taking the heat with Rob, um, which I think is very interesting. But I do, I do think they just have like a little mutual affection for each other. I think that Rob looks at Nick and he's like, reminds me of me when I was younger on one of these shows. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I just like, it's fun. And I do think that that is the angle that Rob needs to take with Nick here being like, Hey, everyone was looking at you and Dawson as like the two. And I think that now we need to look out for each other because we're the last two physical guys out here and they're going to start worrying about us. We're winning lots of comps. Like that's what he needs to do. Um, and I'd love to see it work, but we'll see. We'll see. Nick is not easy. Like he's like, he has a mind of his own. Yeah. Okay. Amy Dawson, Aaron, that's the bottom three. That's who's eligible for uh, the bank for uh, Bankers Temple tonight. Now we saw Aaron; he came back, uh, no case in hand. Very sad moment. Couldn't fight for Alyssa. This is the moment he lost me. This is mm -hmm. it. This is the moment. This is the moment where I was like, "All right," because it's like the like bum, 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 like sad trombone. And he's like walking <laughs> over. Like, like I miss Alyssa. Like, girl, get, he's gone. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> we gotta you fight, have Aaron. To move on. Gone. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go. <laughs> the oh, uh, the oh, uh. <laughs> she's gone. Oh, uh. yeah, look, uh, yes. <laughs> listen, listen. When Rob says, "Aaron, they're in the ocean talking." You need to go talk to him. I was like, I don't want to talk to him. I was like, Oh God, yeah. get out! Please. He almost stomped. Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> is like it is yeah. his child. But did you notice? Okay, I mean, Joe is out here stirring the pot. We know. We know Joe is emotionally invested in this game. He wants the tea and not just the the stuff they're serving after you finish your challenge. Did you notice that Joe is emotionally invested in Aaron? Because he, I noticed numerous times in this episode, Joe is, is cheering Aaron on specifically. He's like, come on, buddy, you got this. Like he's rooting for Aaron. I think he, I think Aaron was so down bad in this episode mm -hmm. that 
Joe himself is like, whatever I can do to lift this guy's spirits. Because when yeah. he comes back with nothing, Joe literally says, Aaron, empty handed, breaks my heart. I'm sorry. You're not seeing Jeff Probst say that. Jeff doesn't give a shit. He, he's, like, <laughs> he's, he's not broken hearted yeah. if, you, if you do bad in the challenge. Joe was hurt to see yes. Aaron come back yeah. to nothing. Yeah, I'll give you that, but I don't want to say that Joe is like totally like one sided because I think that like when Nick comes back with the four point five million, he's like, uh, he, he's like, it. he's like, I'd yeah. love to see, love to see it for you. No, so, I think he's just invested in the yeah. players I mean, like, emotionally. Though. He knows Aaron is giving them good TV. Like, yeah. I, I think that you know he's yeah. not blind. No, I don't yeah. think that he's like he's like uh biased or anything necessarily no. in that, but that he's like he's so invested in like them and their stories that I like to see his emotional reactions to like what's happening. Like it's not robotic. He's like, I truly believe that he's like, man, he knows Aaron's in a tough position and yeah. to see him come back with nothing, it sucks. But like I think his whole role in the show is the good cop to the banker's bad cop. True. You know, he's yeah. the one, good, he'll yeah. give them a high five if they do something good. You know, he's yeah. like, uh, he's not the one snuffing their torch. Yeah. No, he's just no, the he's messenger not. of the he's evil banker. The yeah. Mm -hmm. just Don't yeah. So he's rooting for all of them. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. They go back, as Chappelle said, uh, of that Aaron is uh can't even go and talk to uh dawson he's uh, like wow, rob talk. is pushing him hey you gotta go convince him to let you play like, i don't know no i don't, I don't know wanna. i hate you guys i hate the banker mm -hmm. <laughs> well yeah it's i mean and the funny thing is is that of the people here like with nick being the one that has the decision and that's that being the person that he ultimately needs to talk to like I'm pretty sure Nick is the person he has the best relationship with. Like, it sounded like, as we've talked about in previous uh, episodes, like, Nick and Rob and Aaron, so Nick thought, were like a three. And um, so I think that Nick and Aaron were cool with each other, and they just kind of fumbled Nick. Um, and it didn't seem like any of the mean-spirited stuff around Alyssa had anything to do with Nick. So I think that of all people for Aaron to have to like kind of, you know, swallow his pride and go and approach like this would have like, imagine if it was Amy that was in power here or Stephanie, like he would have, this would never happen. He would not have even talked to them. I'm, I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so at least it was just Nick. Okay. <laughs> he didn't end up doing anything, but at least he had the conversation. All right. Dawson says he's ready to go up against the banker. He's ready mm -hmm. to rock. He's ready to go. Okay. I mean, you know, Nick talks through like the the decision. I mean, you you, you kind of know what he's gonna do here, but mm -hmm. he's 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 saying like, okay, uh, you know, I either pick one of my alliance members, they they beat the banker, and Aaron goes home, or I pick one of my alliance members and they lose and they go home. It's like kind of a simple situation here. Um, so. Like it, it is what it is. It's like one of my Lance members or Aaron is going home when there's only three people literally at risk. It kind of makes it simple here. And it's, it's luck kind of like, it's mostly just luck at this point. Mm -hmm. And so you might as well just let Dawson play because that's the fair thing to do. Cause we're spreading yeah. the wealth. Okay. So just to, I want to just look at the stats here a little bit here. This is episode eight of Dondi. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh eight times the banker's temple. Uh, we have seen one time where there was a non-elimination. So let's throw out the Amy uh versus the banker. Okay, seven times okay. versus the banker, two times we've seen the banker make an offer that allowed the person to just leave the game. So mm -hmm. let's take out the, the Miranda. Yeah. To Miranda and Dawson here. So then those games did not really see. Well, I guess they, the Miranda one did kind of see its way through. But anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't basically the full... anybody who's about to target Boston Rob's alliance has. To <laughs> kind of, mm -hmm. you know, OK, no... so now, then there's five week, other times. You know... The only person that we've seen lose and make a bad deal has Claudia. been Claudia Jordan, right? Yeah. The banker yeah. is one in four. 
It, yeah. So, wow, he sucks, eh? Ah. I hope it's not you, like Chappelle said. Jeez. <laughs> we'll see. Rob had one <laughs> I'm just insulting you to your <laughs> we'll face. <see>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, you know, Jenny, the banker loves when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like he loves that based off of what, what we're seeing, and maybe I don't know if there's some sort of like bias where it's like if you played a hundred times, it would end up being more 50-50. But the banker is not doing so great in terms of beating the players. The players are sort of like having their way. And so it seems like at this point in the game, I guess you want to be immune, but going against the banker is certainly better than sitting there and yeah. not having a shot. That's what everybody's identified. Like, if you're not going mm -hmm. to be in the top, you need to be the person playing deal or no deal because that's the only way you can assure that someone doesn't eliminate you because you go unless up against the banker. And, yeah, unless you're Jordan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you, because if you, um, because yeah, if you look at the stats, even it just seems like beating the banker at Dylan O'Dill isn't that hard. I mean, we've identified you just go mm -hmm. with the odds and hope for the best. And a lot of times, I mean, because they're odds, they're in your favor, or you would not take the deal. I mean, they they outline you have yeah. two of these lower and one of these higher. Like you you have to go with the numbers there. You don't. I mean, you could just and freestyle it if you want yeah. to. No one has made an egregious decision yet either, too. So it's like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, Claudia's yeah. kind of was like oh. Yeah. It wasn't so the at, worst. But, at worst, yeah. you have a 50-50 shot. And then at best, you could have, uh, like we saw with Rob, set up to 75% uh, chance. You might have a really, uh, mm -hmm. the odds are really in your favor and you could cash out uh, against the banker. So going against the banker is not the worst thing in the world. Dawson mm -hmm. puts himself into that spot. 12 cases for Dawson. But I do think that Dawson ends up, this is where I, I've talked about this in the banker's temple Dawson is doing, he opens up 500, 750, $1, a penny, a hundred dollars. He only opens up one big case. And then the offer is $1,166,000. But it's actually a terrible deal from the bank. It's a, a deal is over a million dollars, but there are five cases that are on the board Fire. that Dawson yeah. would lose if he took this deal. This would be what the one the one in six like shot in the dark of pulling this off. This is like like less than 20% for Dawson to take the deal at this point. That yeah. was the easiest decision of any of them mm -hmm. we've seen. It was that but first call from the banker. It's backwards because people are like Dawson, you're doing you awesome. Great. You open up the things. Like, no, you're actually you're doing terrible. He would have been better off if he opened up. Three million, four million, two point five million. But, and, but and, is that terrible? Because it makes his decision super easy in that instance right. to keep playing. Whereas I feel yeah. like when you have half and half, like it's it's more sure. it's more stressful because you're like you have mm -hmm. no way, like you have you have equal odds, that, so you mm -hmm. have you kind of have to keep playing and just hope for Look, the best. Maybe Whereas, like, I'm, that was like I'm a no the one, and I'm looking at this backwards. But I feel like that the okay. The assignment is now beat the banker. I, and if I am Dawson, like this is going horrible. Yeah. Well, in terms the, of me, Dawson, no. getting through this exercise. If the banker is going to be trying to save money and still give low offers despite what's on the like on the board, then maybe. But um, I think that any situation where you have an uneven board, it makes your decision easier on what you should do mm -hmm. next. So yeah. I think that it like, yeah, maybe it's easier if the, like the numbers that are left on the board are smaller to, to mm -hmm. make the decision. Whereas if they were bigger, but Chappelle, you seem know. like you really disagree with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confused because I, what I'm thinking is that if you take out all the little numbers or like Dawson did, then you do mm -hmm. get an offer that is, is very high, but you also have higher numbers than that left on the board. So, you know, like Jenny's saying, I got to play again because I can right. knock out the smaller things and then my next offer is going to be even bigger. Now, I might knock out some of the bigger stuff, but my number is going to go up exponentially, you know, whereas like the, the banker is giving away its highest offers. But if you knock out all the high stuff, the banker's about to hit you with, all right, for $4,000, do you want to stay here? You're like, 
that yeah bro, am i about you to, to go save deal money deal for that's your that, yes yeah yes that's your best chance that, to get your personal if money is if, right, but if, if you are in a situation where you get such a like big offer from the banker and he's like gonna have to dole out even more money he's like how about yeah. i just give you a lower amount of my money because f off but where what i'm saying is that like okay so if he knocked all the high cases off the board except for like what like two million so if he had like yeah. two million is on the board and then a penny a dollar five dollars mm -hmm. whatever is on the left is on the left side the, even if the, the deal comes in and, okay, the bankers made a deal. It's not great. $1,200. Uh, I'm taking the deal because there's like five cases that I have that potentially that my case could be lower than that. Even though it's a low number, like compared to the million dollars, it, all the cases on the, on the left-hand side of the board are all super low. So they're mm -hmm. all going to be lower than whatever skanky offer I get from the banker, I might have a five out of six chance to stay. Yeah. Because my, my think, suitcase is going to be probably, my briefcase is probably going to be lower than even the dumb low offer from the banker if I knocked out all the high numbers. Does that make sense, I mean, Chappelle? I mean, yes, but the thing is, you could still lose going for $1,200. You know what I'm I saying? I could. Like you, yeah. yeah. That's but, the thing. Your your case does not change. Your odds change on if you have the right number. Like his, his number is going to go up because he knows what you have. You know mm -hmm. the banker's not just throwing. He knows what numbers are off. Or what numbers are, so, are left? He doesn't know what. But you they have. say he doesn't yeah, know what. Yeah, the, 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 he doesn't I know what you have, but he knows what the high end is, and he knows what the low end is. Yeah. So he's going to give you a, a, a choice that's difficult. Do you want to make a difficult choice for choice for twelve hundred dollars, or do you want to make a difficult choice for you know one point two million dollars? That's mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. a very different offer. Also, does he offer you a hundred thousand dollars to walk away if you're only going for twelve thousand dollars? They're like. Fine, if that's becoming mm -hmm. like part of like how the game works, where the sure. you know the 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 higher number you're running the banker's and, tab up, the more likely you might. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if Dawson no, knows that an offer is going to be coming. In. I'm no. talking about for for me. I, I want an easy decision to make, and 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 ha having all the low numbers on the board and only one high number. Then yeah. No matter what well, the offer what is, Rob. that's what that is what happened to Rob, and he yeah. made, and he made the right the right choice of yeah. like I'm going to go with where the odds are. Yeah, I mean, I just would rather the odds be in my favor for a high number than a low number. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, like, that's but that's not yeah. that, that yeah. when when you leave all that's the high numbers on the board, the offer comes in and it's like this is a really good offer, and it's lower than all the cases that are on the board. That, like uh, that's you know. why after you know the first couple cases you've opened are low, you should not be cheering against uh, low numbers at that point. You should just be cheering for keeping within one area like you know what i mean like okay this is what's happening i'm getting rid of all of this side um like you you know once you see what like the the probability is starting to become because of what you've opened thus far like if you've gotten rid of four big numbers um you shouldn't be rooting for small numbers anymore like you shouldn't right. want to open small numbers at that point you should want what is going mm -hmm. to make the easiest like odds for you to just mm -hmm. make a good deal yeah, um, yeah. that's what I was that's where it's like they just want to see big yeah. they just want to see big numbers they're like ah oh, like it's like no well, at that's this point it's actually better for you to open another small case yeah, that's what I'm trying to articulate is that, yeah, yes. you're playing yeah. deal or no deal with the big numbers because that's all he has left, but you still get an offer that's relative to the numbers that you get. Whereas if you have two low numbers, like you got a penny and $100 and then you got millions, yeah, the banker can say, all right, 40000 you know, mm -hmm. it's great if you have a low number. It, it, it's not if you have the million, but there's only one up there and you your variance is so much, you know, it's so big. Whereas like mm -hmm. if you get rid of all the low numbers, so let's say you knock them all out. The banker's like, all right, I got to offer you two mil here, you know? And then that way you're like, all right, yeah. two mil versus the odds. I can play that game of deal or no deal mm -hmm. with that. You just need one side to isolate. Yes. I don't think it's a matter of keep all the, the, the high numbers gone yeah. unless you have some high numbers on the board. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying the numbers are so low on the left hand side that I think you it's almost all like out. a cheat. Um, but I feel like that the, oh, the, the offer game, is going to be big enough. The, the like, game, that like the offer, okay. yeah, the worst yeah. offer I'm going to get is going to hundred fifty dollars. Is still going to be like uh, there, there's still seven cases it could still be that are that that that's going to be a good offer for me. Whereas if, now, the, if, if the cases were like one thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, like uh, there'd be a chance where like I'm oh now I'm really in a tough spot because uh, like uh, there's still bad cases in there and the the offer is right in the middle. Mm. Yeah. I just feel like now we've created, you know, this kind of meta where 
uh, you know, if you know that you're going to be running up the banker's like tab here and Mm -hmm. he's like, obviously no matter what, having it isolated to one side over the other is, is good. Um, but there is even more incentive, uh, for it to be a higher number because the banker might just he's tired he's impatient like he's all these things that mm-hmm. just as he is he's stressed out he, um that you might get some actual money for yourself and mm-hmm. just uh hit the old dusty trail <laughs> like if we might see pe- if we get season two we might see people play a little differently because mm-hmm. of what we've seen with miranda and now dawson i don't know okay i mean but even then they're just rooting for the cases. They still don't have any control over what case mm-hmm. they end up with. It's like, yeah. all right, I'm rooting for all the small numbers. And then you get all the big numbers like shit. And you're like, I'm rooting for all the big numbers. You get all the small numbers like shit. There's nothing, there's nothing you can do to change your odds of which ones you're going to get. So it's all, it really comes down to like, you know, like, are you willing this into existence, right? Like how hard are you really hoping that that's the penny in that case? You know, at the end of the day, they don't really have any control over any of that. Yeah. Dawson's original offer was one million one hundred sixty-six thousand. Okay, he, uh, he says no deal. All right, goes back to work. Opens up four point five million, three million, four million. Joe says, yeah. "Well, that was the worst thing that could have happened." I've heard the song to before. The, the, I've heard yeah, the song yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! No, this is the worst possible thing that could have happened. Oh, that's the worst possible thing that could have happened. Oh my god! Cut to oh uh, god. the banker. Uh, your offer's gone up. Yeah, that's the worst thing. I still have to raise it, but just a little bit, <laughs> like, <laughs> like slightly. Yeah, I gotta raise it. Okay, highest uh, offer you've ever gotten on this yeah, show. Yeah, so. one million three hundred ninety-nine uh, thousand. Uh, so it was bound to happen. Okay. So. Yeah. Still, um, he had one low case and then uh, two cases that are higher. So his odds actually did go up to 33% of being safe had he taken that deal. But the banker calls back again with an offer, a personal offer, $100,000 to leave the game, Dawson. GTFO for 100K, okay. he said. Now, we said earlier in the show, good job by the banker. I said yeah. good job by Dawson. I think Jenny said good job by Dawson. Chappelle, y- yeah. you th- said come back to you later on in the show. Yeah, because um, Jordan basically outlines it. She says, yeah, no, we get a lot of Jordan quotes in this episode, but okay. She <laughs> says like, all right, if you leave that money behind and you survive this, it's a one in six chance that you ended up being a millionaire after this. Now, currently... We've already talked about how going up against the banker should not be that scary. You know what I'm saying? You play the odds and hope for the best. I mean, essentially, it's better than having somebody choose you. And we see that Dawson is, uh, he basically asked himself to get put in the bottom. You know, like he basically asked to go to the guest to get the guest there. So let's say he survives next round because of immunity or the next round because of immunity. Or maybe he has to go up against the, the, the banker again and he wins. There's not that many rounds left. At what point does it become a good gamble to go for the millions of dollars? Because the, the pot is only increasing. Right now, mm-hmm. is it a couple mil? It's about, it'll probably end at about five yeah, million. Like, and so it's at yeah. four now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's going up. And so I was like, yeah, it's a hundred thousand dollars that you guarantee to have, but at some at some point, someone's gonna have to risk it to get that money. You know what I'm saying? If we're all just gonna get bought out for 100 k what fun? I just feel like the odds are now starting to seep into one in six ain't that bad. But here's the thing that isn't clear to me, and something that I keep thinking about is when we get to down to the final person that faces the banker for the final case, this this number that is growing with with everything um, that they put in after each week. Is it going to be back to when we get down to one person who pl- plays the banker? Is it going back to normal deal or no deal rules where you can leave and take the money and that's that's now your money and not like you could walk out empty handed? Yeah. Because so, I would. I, like, I think then- they're going to be playing a deal or no deal game, uh, where maybe that the top prize might be what the what the prize pot is. Yeah, See, and then there will be other briefcases, think. and they'll get offers, but then they can take the like like 
in the game thus far, unless the banker has made you a personal offer and saying, hey, you can walk away right now, 100K for yourself. This is not your money. Yeah. Then is it going to be like that in the final? I assume that someone could be like, you know what? Um, because if if there's a risk that you don't even get whatever this giant pot is, yeah. then it's like, what right. am I playing for? The odds to maybe get like a big amount, whereas well, I can have guaranteed you'll play, I think money you'll in play a pocket. deal or no deal game and the banker will make you an offer and the offer will be like, all right, the banker has an offer. It's $730,000. What do you want to mm -hmm. do? Like, um, so, so I don't you, think. No, you yes. start chasing the dragon. And see, I'm out, I, but that's the thing with gambling, right? That's what that's the that's yeah. the point. But I, I, but I do feel like this is a gambler's game, and that's why I said one in six actually not that bad odds. But for a it's million not dollars. one in six. It's not one in six because because um, Dawson still has not gotten out of the that Dawson could still lose and get he nothing. Could not nice. So, yeah. But yeah, so his You're odds are actually survive. Yeah. Okay, let's say he gets it down to two cases, so he still has to get through a 50-50 before he gets through the one and six. And I'm not a mathematician, but then that actually makes his odds, according to my very basic math here, a 9% oh, okay. chance to get well, to here, the end of the game. Well, here's the thing. We've already identified that the banker sucks at getting <laughs> anybody to, to at beating these people, right? Mm -hmm. So the odds that you beat the banker are actually in your favor based on the elementary math we did at the beginning of this podcast, right? They could they could be, but the odds are right now are he is he is down in the odds. He that if he could open up one more suitcase and get it to 50-50, it was 33% chance right now. And I know I always mm -hmm. get the math wrong and I get it and I read the comments and then you and you all tell me, but so he can get it to 50-50 if he opens one more case. He he will either make a good deal or make a bad deal when he gets it down now, to 50 But now are we getting to the point where, and this is where, like, <laughs> is, is the banker just, his time's <clears throat> coming. You know what I mean? Like, oh, mm -hmm. things are, the pendulum has to start swinging back, baby. Yeah. And, like, suddenly the banker's going to have a couple good weeks where things go his way. And, like, I don't know. <laughs> and in reality, it's probably better than one in six in terms of Dawson being a physical competitor. But it's a, just to right. put it in survivor terms, we know about the shot in the dark. This would mm -hmm. be, all right, Nick, you have to hit, uh, flip a coin, and then call that right. And then after you flip the coin, then hit the shot in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe. It's not quite or, the same as the shot in the dark. Yeah, or or, or, or win right a bunch now with 100K. Yeah, yeah, look, look. I'm, I'm not saying that I feel like it's foolish to take the 100K. I just don't think that at this point, with six people left, you should be so easily uh, swayed by the banker. Because, look, again, if Dawson doesn't take this deal, he potentially takes out one of his biggest threats in Aaron. Boston Rob has to potentially win or put or be in the bottom two to pick somebody to guess and take out. There's a one in four chance that it's going to be Dawson. It might not even be him. He might survive it because we know Boston Rob wants Stephanie mm -hmm. out, wants Amy out. So that's another round where he's got to buy, basically. He's aligned with three people who are not targeting him at that point with uh, with Amy, uh, whoever left of Amy and Stephanie, and obviously uh, Nick is still there as well. So win a couple of you got a, a good alliance you're in the majority you yeah. uh you have somewhat of a shield and you could potentially win immunity i don't see who's in a better position to not take this deal it's so an does he become a target debate. if rob and aaron once a target rob of and who? aaron are off rob? the well, yeah, once yeah, they're off the yeah. table you know what well, i mean then like even, even then physically he has to beat amy and stephanie and nick and then and jordan is like He's seen this. He seems pretty capable. I'm not going to say anything against Amy, but Amy's like one of the smaller competitors who we've seen people have not been taken very seriously in competitions. Uh, I'm just saying, if you're looking at the board, yeah, I'm kind of like, listen, maybe don't even target Aaron here. Maybe take out Jordan. Uh, well, she's safe, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, yeah, you got to take out Aaron here. Only but that's what I'm saying. Like you, Amy. but then you yeah. can you can hide a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like. I just feel like if you're you going can, to be gambling for millions of dollars, now might be the time to start yeah. gambling. But once Rob goes, is Dawson like the most likely person to get taken out when Amy or Stephanie goes up into? Yeah, they have an alliance of they four. They have to start eating start their turning, own. They're going to start yeah. turning on each other. Yeah. Again, I just feel like if you're if it's a game of social strategy, maybe that's something you should be planning for. What is his final game? What is his end game always? Well, I guess it just be the four of us, and then we'll all duke it out. You see how mm -hmm. often that helps and it works for people in these reality games. Like, mm -hmm. no, you need to start building a, another alliance within this alliance and saying, okay, let we got out Aaron. Now, once we get through Rob and and Jordan, uh, Nick, 
he can go. Amy, Stephanie, y'all good with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it took a lot of the, the wiggle room for him to play the game out of, the, like, just by saying, here's 100K. And I think it makes the game a little bit less interesting. Yeah. So, I like, yeah, I think it's a good deal I agree deal with that. The money. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that if you, like, listen, the gambler, the ultimate gambler yeah. is the one who will win this game. And if you're not willing to gamble, that's you're going home with 100K. That's what the says. Yeah. No, that's mm-hmm. a good point. You, yeah. you argued it well. You know, yeah, that's what I was like. I don't know if it's so cut and dry. My other thing too is that I don't think the the final challenge is going to be a game of deal or no deal versus the banker. Like I know they've said that, but they keep building this prize pot, and they're not saying it's a briefcase of many briefcases. They're just like, but there's a prize they pot. They 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 play the ultimate game of deal yeah. or no deal. I know yeah. they're saying so, it, but I don't believe them. Yeah, I don't believe. But, them. I just, <laughs> but well, I can't. What not- do you think that the last challenge is going to be like? Uh, like an obstacle course, and then the winner is going to get like uh, you know seven million dollars. I don't know because the, the problem is that this whole time they've been like, okay, before we play deal or no deal, we have to get a number of briefcases banked, right? Maybe the final challenge is some type of obstacle course where they are going to get other briefcases to go along with this $7 million pot. Mm-hmm. But it's just the fact that they're mm-hmm. building one pot that makes me feel like, okay, well, why are we building this whole pot if you're going to ultimately tell me, okay, here's your here's the offer, $200,000. Like, what? Why, why did I do all this extra stuff to get to that point? So yeah. maybe I'm just But if the numbers are so not- big, then, like, the chances are that, like, the offers will be pretty yeah. fantastic. Big as well. But- right. But, like, what's yeah. me not taking away? Okay, your offer is $4 million. Mm-hmm. Okay, bye. You know, like, at that I point, think- I'm like, yeah, take the deal. I think the problem here, too, with this being, like, the first, you know, this the first run of this new concept of a show is that people don't really know – including us exactly how we get to the end and what the end game looks like. And that is the hallmark of any show that we seem to talk about on hit or quake. <laughs> like we don't know how this is actually going to end and how we get there. And there's been so much talk on the show about like, Oh, getting down to the final two, the final two, like why do they all think there's some sort of final two? And there's so much discussion about it being physical and like, like you were saying, Chappelle, like, okay, well, Dawson's in a good situation where he's like, you know, he's a pretty fit guy and like can probably like win, you know, his himself some safety from here on out. But like, I think there's enough variance in some of these challenges that um, we might see the banker be like, oh, the banker wants to change it up. And now it's like a freaking trivia challenge the next week or something. So I don't think it's a necessary like it's hard to calculate your chances to do well in something when you don't know what the game is. And I think Alyssa that's was the worried problem. about a trivia challenge against Aaron at the end of the game. Right. She, she even said and that. Then, but listen, but she was basing best- what she expected on Big Brother is what kind of what she was saying right. in the interview. But the best way to keep Aaron from going up against you in a trivia challenge is beating him and then eliminating him and not eliminating mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. That's all I'm saying is if you have yeah. to risk it to get the biscuit, a wise man once said. And um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just saying. Taste the biscuit. Some yeah. take the risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you came here for this whole time for 100k. Congratulations. I'm glad you got the money. But again, I think the game needs to reward the person who's going to make the big move. And I don't think it's I don't maybe think Chappelle's this is the like, banker. Uh, Has anybody thought about that? <laughs> Ever yeah, like oh he, if i was came a banker, in here and he tried to completely he, different. he tried to divert the attention off of him by saying you know what i think rob sesternino mm-hmm. yeah. that is a classic move you know this is a double a double double cross because jenny is the banker and jenny oh, thinks mm-hmm. that if i put it on no 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 they keep saying me. okay joe refers to the banker and says he okay and so mm. uh, like it's i'm a, just saying, never see it coming. not my pronoun yeah. so I, it's not me mm-hmm. i'm just mm-hmm. saying uh so more likely to be one of the two of you but either way you really shouldn't be wanting to be the banker right now because the banker's bleeding money okay he's, he not, he's not doing well, well he has to give money away yeah. to get rid of people at this point mm-hmm. all right so we're down to six rob and aaron survive to fight another wow. day or rob to fight for another day iron to <laughs> exist for With another aaron. day he's there yes uh and then jordan <laughs> who has emerged plus the night owls are down to three stephanie and amy and nick and we'll see if they can survive without was dawson the leader of the night owls I don't I feel like it was Amy. I think he was. I, I, I get the sense he was. I think Remember? Amy's the he alpha a, of no. the Remember, night owl. Jenny, 
Remember, Dawson is a narcissist. He made people eat his toenails. Yeah, but that's why I think that that's why he's not enough in control of it. Like, I think that he's like he has too much like of his own stuff going on where I think that like Amy talks about Rob being the puppet master of the Rob mob. And mm -hmm. I see she she's bringing her people together. Nothing brings a group together like gossiping and hating on the same person. And I watch how Amy's like, God, isn't Rob like just he look at the way that he controls everything. Like Amy is the cult leader of that side mm -hmm. is, is my take there. And that's why I've been saying the entire time that that's the most dangerous person for Rob. It's because she's kind of doing the same thing he does. But for the opposition he's like they're the other people now and we need to get them out mm -hmm. like we're all buds like we're all family and we're all owls i guess um mm -hmm. so that's my take i don't think that i don't think that dawson was a glue i think he was an important piece and i think that dawson was always on that side whereas nick seemed to have kind of floated over but i think that amy is the leader yeah i agree i think amy is the leader i think dawson was just in a really good spot and i think that like he did all that hard work and just forfeited it. But again, he got 100K, so I can't fault him. Okay. If someone, off, I'm telling, like, I will say, we've talked through the reasons why odds wise, maybe, you know, it wasn't worth the risk without knowing how it could go for Dawson. I will say, if you really want and or need 100K, I can only imagine how hard it is to not say no in that instance where you have an actual guaranteed paycheck right dangled mm -hmm. right in front of you um mm -hmm. so i completely understand where he's coming from with that i can't imagine saying no to 100k but right uh that's why this game is wild you 100K know 100k american fun. jenny yeah i would love 100k american that'd be so much more money for me <laughs> <laughs> that's why the canadians coming and winning survivor it's like you have no idea mm -hmm. uh that's the They're that's blessed. the biggest payday no taxes yep. too okay <laughs> All right, Chappelle. Anything else for Deal or No Deal Island before you talk to Dawson tomorrow? No, this was this was good. It was a fun episode, Deal or No Deal Island. I really wish more people were watching this show. We say it all the time, but Donnie's really good. It's delivering, yeah. uh, and it somehow has not lost any steam. You know, we've had a, a few big fights, but it's still chugging along. And you know, yeah. like I said, the the banker is very invested in making sure this is still an entertaining show. And so I imagine yeah. that there'll be a few more shenanigans moving and forward, but. Uh, here for it. We get a nice response on the Deal or No Deal podcast. You know, I follow the views and the comments and what you all are saying and watching uh, Chappelle's exit interviews. And so, yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, check out our uh, Deal or No Deal Island coverage. So we appreciate you all coming on this journey with us. It's been fun. Yeah. We're fondy of, Fondy of the Dondies. Fondy of the Dondies. Right. Dondie yeah. gang. Right. Yeah. Dondie okay. Gang. So... It's been a, a good ride. Uh, a lot more to do. We've got the exit interview coming up on Tuesday. So uh, check that out. And a few more surprises, uh, I think, along the way. Jenny, what else is coming up for you? Nothing. I had, I had last week was really fun. I got to see some, uh, some familiar faces up here in the, in the great white North. And uh, I'm still recovering from that <laughs> because <laughs> it, it's a lot um but yeah just enjoying the the dondy and uh again if you're gonna be in chicago look forward to seeing you i finally got my flights i'll be nice. there it's it's legit it's happening can't wait to see the two of you yeah and um yeah i just want to echo the the sentiments that rob just uh had there the the people that listen and support this podcast are real ones and I, best it people. really does bring me joy to know that uh people are watching and listening along and having fun with it because it's freaking great time it is literally sunshine in my life like the two of you and that's all i've got follow me on social media at jenny autumn and that's it okay great job jenny Chappelle. uh yes i will i you can of course find me here on rob has a podcast still talking about below deck every week with sasha we were having some YouTube issues. We're going live recently. So Sasha and I are going to have that Below Deck podcast out to you. We should have it out by now. Uh, but we weren't able to go live on Wednesday. But most Wednesdays, we're going live on YouTube uh, Wednesday, uh, at 
uh, 3 p.m. Eastern to talk about the most recent episodes of Below Deck. So check that out. Um, Rob ditched me for the week to go up to the Great White North. And so mm -hmm. I took over Club Condo by myself with my special guests, uh, Maggie Morgan and Brian Scally last yeah. week. And but we have a brand new great. Club Condo today, Chappelle. I made up for it. I don't know why you're talking about last week. I mean, but the things you said today. Rob said old news. So, yeah, yeah, but the things you said today were just so toxic and problematic. I was oh, like, Aaron, no. like, oh my God, don't listen. Problematic. Too problematic. Then, then, too yeah. problematic. Yeah. I think actually you should probably go listen now to find out what that it was. It was spicy <laughs> and a little ghetto too, but whatever. That's Club Condo mm -hmm. when Rob's back. Uh, but yeah, check that out last week. It was a great time. Uh, nothing but Netflix this week. Uh, uh, Josh Wiggler and I talked about white collar, uh, USA's white cl collar from the same universe that kind of brought you suits. Uh, Rob knows a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Josh and I went back to the well and talked about that, which is new on Netflix. And so, uh, check that out on nothing but Netflix. And then, of course, you can catch me on Recap Kickback. Uh, that's recapkickback.com where you can keep up with all of my podcasting. On Thursday, we dropped our movie review for the movie Shirley on Netflix. It was Mari, LaTanya, and myself. Uh, Sasha and I are talking about Summer House Martha's Vineyard on Recap Kickback. So check that out if you're a fan of that show. And then Gia and I are doing recaps of Abbott Elementary as well. So check all that out and more. Uh, and follow me on all social media platforms at Recap Kickback. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for Donde. Uh, we'd Donde. love to read your comments. Uh, hit like and subscribe on the video, too, if you'd be so kind. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.